Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to another PowerPoint presentation. If there's one thing I do know that translates across all borders, it's that you can, you can only tolerate one or two of these things before you start to fall asleep. So I'm going to try to make this as interesting <laughs> as possible. And uh, I just wanted to thank Samir for having me up here, David and everyone at DistroPress for having me up uh, as well. And um, if the deputy mayor is still in the house, thank you for making Can uh, weather such a great uh, time the past couple of days. Had a great time here. Um, Entertainment Weekly is a publication in the United States. Um, it's the largest and one of the last remaining entertainment publications there. Um, and I want to just, just be clear about something. We cover entertainment, but we're not going to cover George Clooney's wedding, right? <laughs> Big distinction, People Magazine, it's the most profitable magazine in the United States. Entertainment Weekly is definitely not the most profitable magazine in the United States, but I like to think that it's the coolest and it's the most creative because we're able to work directly with uh, the performers themselves. Uh, we have about 1.7 million circulation. We have about 10.3 million if you include pass along with that. About 30 million people visit our website every month and that includes the mobile handset version. Um, we have about 3 million Twitter followers, more if you follow us now, at EW, and uh, about 2.5 million Facebook fans, but we do find that the majority of our engagement comes on Facebook rather than Twitter. Here's a video about Comic-Con, which is one of our event strategies. Uh, we do about five events each year, but Comic-Con, um, if you're not aware, is the annual uh, conference in San Diego where people dress up like Superman and Batman, only they don't look as good. And after three days in the hot sun, they start to smell. Um, but it's also a place where performers, celebrities, actors, directors debut their new films. So if Cannes is the place that you go to try to win awards or to start your campaign for that Oscar or that uh, Golden Globe, Comic-Con is the place you go to get all the fanboys and the nerds and the geeks and, and the cool people excited about your next big movie, whether it's Avengers debuting there or Interstellar with Christopher Nolan and Matthew McConaughey. Um, that's where you go to really get everybody excited. And as you'll see, it, it's kind of exciting. So that was Comic-Con, and as you can see at the party, we had, uh, we had drinks named after some of the TV shows that we cover. That was a sponsored opportunity. We had special um, suites that were named after some of the television shows. The red carpet was sponsored. In the actual Comic-Con suite itself, um, Bose was a sponsor. They make uh, headphones, I'm sure. Um, you've seen them on planes if you don't have one yourself. Um, and they sponsored one of the areas in our suite. Now, this is not a gifting suite. There are no, this is not consumer facing. Uh, this is basically an opportunity for the celebrities to get away from the craziness um, and, and come to our photo studio, uh, come into our serious satellite radio station to uh, be interviewed, and to film video for us as well. Um, so it's probably a, one of the tent poles for us. Um, but I want to just start by asking you guys, you know, these are all American shows, but I do want to see just sort of where you fall on the spectrum. Um, Give me, a, give me a hands up if you know of this show or you like this show. Let's start with Game of Thrones. Anybody? Wow. All right, 20 million in the US and it looks like a decent amount overseas. Okay, that's Joffrey. I'm not gonna spoil it if anyone hasn't watched last season, but some pretty fantastic things happened to him. Uh, next up is The Walking Dead. Is that popular here? Do people like, oh yeah, people like, 
Okay, The Walking Dead. That's Norman Reedus um, on the cover there. That's a really popular show in the United States. About 17 million people watch that uh, each week. How about Sherlock? Yes. All right. And ladies, how many of you just have a crush on Benedict Cumberbatch? <laughs> Gentlemen? <laughs> All right. Sherlock, I knew that would do well. How about Doctor Who? Come on. Yay. Yeah? I was raised on Doctor Who. Uh, matter of fact, raised on PBS by my parents, uh, which had a lot of the BBC programs. Um, what I mean to say here, uh, we'll skip that. What I mean to say here is everyone has a favorite show. Everyone has a favorite actor, perhaps. Um, but very few, of us, very few of us are fans of entertainment as a category. You don't come to Entertainment Weekly because you're saying to yourself, well, gee, I'd, I'd like to see what's happening in entertainment. No, you come because you want to see what's happening on the Game of Thrones or Walking Dead. You know, when I used to work at Sports Illustrated, it was much the same thing. You're not a fan of sports in general. You're a, you know, a fan of Arsenal or you're, you're a fan of the Chicago Bears. Um, and we try as a magazine to tap into those passion points, to identify those passion points, um, and then to serve those different passion points as best we can. Um, as I say, as a content provider, we want to be many things to many people. We have three challenges. Um, the first is, how do we expand our reach? The reach is the top of the funnel, whether it's newsstand, whether it's subscribers, or whether it's visitors to our Facebook page, our website, our, our Twitter feed. But how do we do that without sacrificing quality? One of the big trends of the past five years has been uh, sites such as BuzzFeed and, and uh, Huffington Post that have just reached this enormous scale. Upworthy is another one. Um, and, and in some cases, they do that through community contributions. And the editor's task, no matter where that content is coming from, is to make sure that that is always on brand, right? So that we are not welcoming something under our umbrella that does not fit with what our brand is, regardless of whether it's merchandise, as we've been discussing, or, or um, a tweet, something as atomic and small as a tweet. How do we do that without devaluing the core brand, which is still very much the magazine for us, but increasingly digital? Um, engagement, and this is a big one for me. Um, think about it in terms of the magazine. I may send you the magazine, but you might not pick it up off your magazine table, right? How do we convince people that we are urgent, that we are a necessity in their daily lives? And when it comes to the digital version, and if you look at this statistic, it'll actually be very revealing to you. How many times does the average visitor come to your website per month? Now, if it's the New York Times or it's the Guardian, those are daily news sites, and you might expect to see anywhere between 10 and 30 times. The most obsessed users will come 200 times per month to that website. But if you have a commercial publication that's not telling you how to perform CPR or make dinner or you know, what Obama just said when he was meeting with the new prime minister of India, India, then you need to make that site seem urgent to people. right? So how do we turn them from five times a month into 30 times a month? That's very crucial for us. Uh, and then finally, distribution. Um, this is more for digital, uh, but it is an issue with print as well. How do we know what our readers want, and how do we give them exactly that so that we're sort of being a little bit more efficient with our targeting? So we have three tactics. The first is to grow volume, and that's by developing original content, developing more content that fits each of those niches that we just laid out. And the second is to amass reader data, and I don't mean to do this nefariously. Um, this is not through the NSA. We're not hacking into anyone's phones. Um, but we want the readers to tell us, what are you interested in? Tell me what your favorite shows are. Um, we can do this passively as well. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of website you're publishing. You can do it anywhere. Um, and finally, we want to be able to take all of that volume content, now that we have something on Game of Thrones or whatever. Samir, what's your favorite show? What's your favorite TV show? Sanford and Sons. Sanford and Sons. You're lying. <laughs> It's Sanford and Sons? Yeah. We don't have any content on Sanford and Sons. <laughs> you're you're going to be very disappointed when you come to our website. I'm sorry. Uh, the Good Wife. OK, The Good Wife. There you go. So now that we have this incredible volume of content about The Good Wife, how do we find out what Samir likes and then deliver that content to him directly? And increasingly, that's a mobile solution. Mobile allows you to use push messaging. Right. That's the one way that you can sort of remind people you exist on their devices, which are incredibly complicated, incredibly full of apps that let you throw paper into a wastebasket and sound a little air 
siren and everything else that we have. So um, for us, that's really the next stage. I, I liken it to transitioning from a newsstand mentality. This is digitally, mind you, we're not moving away from newsstands in print. Um, to more of a broadcast mentality. Instead of expecting readers to remember that we exist, we want to tell them that we exist. And that's a core distinction for us. Now, I suppose I should have started with this, being as we are a collection here of uh, print magazine distributors and printers. Um, the magazine's absolutely the flagship for us. Um, regardless of whether the trend lines are pointing slowly downward, it will always be the reason that people come to our brand, and, and really it's the reason that uh, we're able to perform so well digitally, um, particularly without having a tremendous amount of investment. And that's the game I think a lot of us play. No one wants to be on the cover of a website, and that's why we're successful. We can ask Robert Downey Jr., uh, we can ask Angelina Jolie to come be on the cover of our magazine if they give us digital content, right? Simpsons Family Guy, they just did a crossover last night. I'm not sure if it aired here. This is a big event in the United States. Simpsons have been around for decades. In order to do this cover, we said, we want you to custom draw covers for us, um, but also we want five minutes of that, and we want to put it out before anybody else has it. It quickly became the number one article we've ever published on our website. Um, and that's, that's something that we repeat again and again and again, using the cover of the magazine as leverage. As you can see, this post right here, it got 116,000 likes on Facebook. Which I'm not even sure how many people tweeted it, but uh, we put this out at Comic-Con, we got the video. A month and a half later, we had the covers, but we'd use that uh, cover as leverage. Uh, we've talked about this already. Alternative revenue is key for us as we look to leverage the brand in, in new and exciting ways. Uh, we have our Comic-Con event, um, several others. Next year, we'll be starting something called Women Who Kick Ass, which we're excited about. We do that as an annual panel at Comic-Con, but I think there's lots of opportunity for it. Uh, we're working on a line of merchandise as well, so I expect at the break, or perhaps tonight, um, I'll be picking many brains about how to do that effectively. Um, it's certainly a challenge. Um, and digitally, here are a few things we're doing in 2015 to evolve. Um, the community is a site that we launched as a sort of test grounds. Um, right now, it's about 50 different contributors. Uh, this is a mixture of paid and unpaid um, that produce about 150 pieces of content uh, per week. We'd like to increase this um, so that we can have all the different shows covered. Our own writers can only cover a certain number of uh, television shows. Um, and as yet, the community is not covering movies, it's not covering books, it's not covering CDs. Um, we're developing a three-speed newsroom. Uh, in addition to the normal content that we have, we'll have a shift-based system. Uh, and then we're going to double the size of our social team. And I, I think it's important really to emphasize um, how crucial it is that we all have strong social presences. That's what we use to remind people that the, news, the magazine is on newsstands. That's what we use to remind people that um, we've published some exclusive on our website because increasingly the day for the average 18 to 34 year old begins by opening Twitter or begins by opening Facebook. Samir was checking his Facebook earlier. It looks good. I gotta like your page. Um, but for us, it's important to be there because that's where the people are, and we want to remind them that we, uh, that we have something great for them. Um, next year, this is just a photo of our website. Next year, we'll be expanding the website. We've done a light refresh it already, a uh, light refresh on it, but I think it's important to not only highlight what content is from the magazine. I think a lot of people are confused what is from the magazine on the website and what is not. Similar to some of the other panelists, 99% of what's on our website is brand new content. If you, if you survey readers, many of them think that it's just from the magazine. They don't understand there's a separate team or an integrated team that's producing it all together. Um, and we're going to redesign it so that it's mobile and, and responsive. Uh, then, of course, next year we'll, we'll turn 25. I don't imagine many of you know who this was, but this was Katie Lang. 25 years ago, this was our first cover. And so it's kind of a fun opportunity for us. We may not be 80, we may not be 103, um, but 25 is enough time to look back at the ways that we have all changed, not only as a magazine, but as a culture. So, so for us, that's an important opportunity to, um, 
to dig through the archives, to welcome back some of the, the former contributors, art directors, designers, and editors. Um, but also, we're hoping to be able to create an event around that. Well, thank you, guys. Thanks, man. Thank you.